Hello, good afternoon, guys. Are you sleepy? Uh, please uh, put your hands up. Hands means hands, right? Both hands. Uh, please put your hands up. Uh, who's like, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, who's, uh, this is the skill level. We'll say that, uh, five is the greatest, uh, one is the worst. Right? Worst means you know nothing on machine learning. So I'm going to teach from the beginning then. Right. Who's in the level one? Level one. Right. Up, up, hands up is like this. Right. Oh, okay. Who's in uh, level two? Level two. Right. Great. Uh, who's in middle? That means in three. Right. Uh, who's in four? Who's in four? Right. We have one in four. Who's in five? Then he's going to teach me. Right. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, sit down, guys. Uh, we'll have a look what machine learning is and deep learning is and how we're going to use this thing in Azure. Right? I can't hear you. Are you guys ready to hear this thing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We'll do. Uh, we'll start from the beginning because we have two fancy terms. One is machine learning and the other one is deep learning. What actually machine learning means and what actually deep learning means. So I'm, I'm into AI, that means I'm MVP in AI. So we'll say AI is not, it's like a C, right? It's like a C, like we can't see even like where it finishes and where it, oops, sorry. So we can't see where it ends or where it starts. So in this version of artificial intelligence or the AI, Machine learning is a subpart, and in that subpart, deep learning is some fancy subpart in machine learning. Some guys uh, might not agree with this, I know, but like deep learning is a part of machine learning. Right, we'll go forward and see what are the differences between machine learning and deep learning and what is AI and those things. Right. If you have any problem, you just hands up or no need to hands up, just stand up and ask the question. Right? Deal? Deal? Yes. Right. So what actually machine learning means? One of my very good friends, Pikri out there, always ask, you are telling uh, always teaching about machine learning and when that machine is going to learn. Right? So uh, this is the case. Machine learning is something like teaching the machines. That means you all deal with data. We have a lot of data that is extracting from everywhere in each second. From your mobile phones, from your smart watches, not the mobile phones like 1100, but like the mobile phones like with Android, iOS, but not with Windows, like they collect data, right? And they analyze the, those data and give some, we'll say, some important outputs. Have you seen that in the food city, how many post operations that happen in, in, in 15 minutes in Kiel's or Apico? It generates hell a lot of data in a small amount of time. Anyone fan of Gone Free Formula One? Anyone? Anyone watched last uh, race with Lewis uh, Hamilton got pissed off with uh, the Red Bull team? So, Formula races, when it, like starting from the Kiel supermarket to the formula races that happens, each and every point they collect data in massive amount. These data can be used to train machines and give some output. If you go to the dictionary or like if you just Google what machine learning is, uh, it will tell you that's a branch of AI that concerns of designing some algorithms and the models based on data models so what actually a machine learning model is what is a machine learning model any idea what actually it is so a machine learning model is a mathematical model similar to a mathematical model that is pre-trained from the data that we have and that is going to predict some output based on the model that they have built. 
So there are some models that can adapt according to the data that is coming. So we can use even pre-trained model. I'm not going to explain those things. And uh, for the guys that is new to ML and all, we'll see this small video. I'm not sure whether you can see, uh, whether you can hear the video. The vulnerability to methods can get better at us through experience is part of being human. When we're born, we know almost nothing and continue almost nothing for ourselves. But so we can do the same for every day. But did you know that computers can do the same? Machine learning brings together statistics and computer science to enable computers to learn how to do a given task without being well read to do so. Just as your brain uses experience to improve at a task, so do computers. Say you need a computer that can tell the difference between a picture of a dog or a picture of a cat. You can begin by feeding it images and telling it, this one's a dog, that one's a cat. A computer program to learn will sync statistical patterns within the data that will enable it to recognize a cat or a dog in the future. It might figure out on its own that cats have shorter noses and that dogs come in a larger variety of sizes, and then represent that information numerically within a single space. But, crucially, it's the computer, not the program, that identifies those patterns and establishes the algorithm by which future data will be sorted. One example of a simple yet highly effective algorithm is to find up to a line separating cats and dog. When the computer sees a new picture, it checks which side of the line it falls on and then says either cat or dog. But of course, there can be mistakes. The more data the computer receives, the more final changes algorithm it has. And more accurate it can be in its predictions. Machine learning is already widely applied. It's the technology that will measure recognition, text and speech recognition, spam filters on your inbox, online shopping or viewing recommendations, credit cards for detection, and so much more. At the University of Oxford, machine learning researchers are combining statistics and computer science to build algorithms that can solve more complex problems more efficiently. From medical diagnoses to social media, the potential of machine learning to transform our world is truly mind blowing. Find out more. So that's it. We do transform the world with machine learning. They say we're going to transform the world with machine learning. So, how this is going to happen? Have you ever used a Google Street View, that, not Street View, that traffic view, that colors in red? Right, many have used. Have you ever think of how that came? How Google is seeing our street traffic? How they are saying that Rajgiriya is fully packed? It is using the data that you that they collect from your Android phones. And based on some models they have built, they are saying this area would be more with more traffic. And have you uh, ever experienced that you have searched uh, for a chocolate for your girlfriend in eBay and an advertisement from a chocolate company comes to your Facebook? So how that happens? Those things are based on recommendation systems that built with machine learning algorithms. So those are the possibilities that, that goes on. This is not a science fiction right now. And have you ever used Siri, Cortana, Google Assistant? You use, right? So chatbots? So these are some areas that ML is coming in. Uh, this is a bit of theory. If you need the theory, you can Hear this thing, or else you can switch off your ears. So, uh, ML, uh, there are two big subparts one is supervised learning, and the other is uh, unsupervised learning. There's a subpart as semi supervised or partial supervised. I'm not talking about that, but in supervised, that is pretty simple. It's telling like duck and not duck. That means we have a data set and we have the labels. Uh, with the model that we have built, we can predict whether the coming image is a duck or not a duck. Have you seen that uh, the TV series Silicon Valley? Jin Yang developed something like this. Can you remember that? Right. So, uh, 
this is supervised learning. We have a labeled data set. When it comes to unsupervised learning, we don't have a labeled data set. We have a data set and we're going to understand the patterns of that data set and cluster those things and see what is like what 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 we can predict with this data that is the main difference between what i can hear between what supervised learning and unsupervised learning great uh, we can use this thing to get the old man out get the black sheep out can you think of an example scenario that you can use this thing in your real world anyone from the production industry production right uh, in which uh, industry are you sir apparel okay can you suggest a thing for your apparel company or the factory to use this kind of scenario to identify the defects. exactly to identify the defects identify uh, which which worker has made a shirt with few buttons right so something like that those are some areas that uh, you can use this kind of machine learning algorithm right that is about machine learning and bit of deep learning what is the difference between ml and dl or deep learning any idea what is the difference between these two Mm -hmm. In deep learning, we need a very large data set. All right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that would be like big okay answer. I'll say. Uh, this is the case. In ML, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some features and as inputs and build a model and get the prediction from that built model. Right, uh, but when it comes to machine learning, the number of input features that we're going to use, not the number of uh, data or the number of uh, data items that we're going to use, number of input features that we're going to use. That means we'll say input, uh, yeah, input. Uh, if it is a CSV file or a table, the number of columns in the table, right? The number of features that we input features that we're going to use would be limited with some machine learning algorithms right so that we have to do some mathematical technique called feature engineering to get a better not overfitted or not uh, underfitted machine learning model there are many mathematical techniques to do this feature engineering part pca is one of them you can like write that thing in your papers and just go and google there are many tutorials on those things but in deep learning we get the advantage of getting all the input and feeding that thing to build the model that means no feature engineering in that mathematics is not needed with deep learning because we can use a lot of input feature numbers in deep learning algorithms right so it is simple like that we get a input of a car and we do the feature extraction or the feature engineering and we put that thing into classification and we get the car not car model but when it comes to deep learning we get the input the image of the car and we feed that thing into a neural network or the deep learning algorithm and deep learning is not only about neural networks right that is also a myth there are like deep learning deep uh, decision for us also available as deep learning algorithms but the most popular one or the most trendy one is uh, neural networks so uh, feature extraction and classification both done inside this uh, deep learning algorithm and it goes for building this classifying model right that's it and uh, now the question is uh, what is the earliest time you heard of this ml and deep learning earliest time in 2012 2012 have you heard no 13 14 yeah 14 it came like 15 
Yeah, you think so? Right. So, how this actually born? Is this a new child? ML and deep learning is a new child? No. Can you guess the birth year or birth day? Like we'll say in 90s? Anyone say 90s? Please hands up. Uh, hands up means twice, right? Two hands. Uh, anyone say 90s? No one? Anyone say 80s? 80s? Hands up is 90s. 80s. Anyone say seven, uh, 70s? 70s? Anyone say 60s? Hands up is like this. 60s? Anyone say 50s? Right. Actually, uh, machine learning and deep learning came in 50s and 60s. Those algorithms were found and built and proven in, from mathematics in 50s and 60s. We had a brilliant set of mathematicians who do these ML stuff and build those algorithms, gradient design, you name it, everything. And they prove those things in the papers using ballpoint pens and then, or the ink pens, and then they hadn't had a good computation power to use these things because they had the machines like this to do the computation. The machines were like rooms, but had only the computation power that is less than that you have in your mobile or your smartwatch. Right. Then the era of cloud came. Uh, AWS came into the scene. Then after that, Azure came into the scene, Microsoft, Google came into the scene. Then after that, people got the idea, okay, the computation power that we get from these, from these distributed computing can be used for machine learning and AI. So they began to use these computation powers and those techniques in ML and AI for the deep learning. So this is a this is more like a marketing term that we can use. That it, this is a Microsoft AI platform. That they have many services that offers for you with Azure to do ML and to get outputs and do some marvelous stuff. Anyone here developers, software developers? Software developers. Right. Uh, anyone from the DB background, database or the business intelligence? Right. Uh, anyone uh, from QA? Right. Any students? Students? Right. So, in all your cases, you know, as the developers, anyone from startups? Right. Like, in most of the cases, we want to make the client wow. Right. And students, you need to make your supervisors wow. Right. That's the case. You need an A. And uh, in your case, developers need some good revenue to make for your company. So you make, you have to make your client wow. So these are some tools that you can use to make your client or the supervisor wow. Right? No need to know about any ML algorithm or something. In Azure, with cognitive services, you can access all those fancy stuff: image recognition, text reading, OCR, uh, speech APIs. Uh, analyzing whether he is smiling or not, emotion APIs, analyzing he is a male or a female and analyzing the age, you name it. Everything is on cognitive services. What you have to know is how to access a REST API. Please answer the people who knows what REST API is. REST API. Okay, so you need to know REST APIs and JSON. That's it. You know AI and you can make your clients and the supervisors wow. Uh, that is cognitive services and the bot framework that is also coming with Azure. Uh, I'm not going to talk with that. That's a different area and Azure machine learning. And on that, there are many tools that we can use. I'm going to uh, demo you some tools that you can use with serious ML and deep learning stuff. Right. Uh, Azure ML Studio. I have uh, talked about ML Studio a lot in many sessions. Uh, anyone who have used ML Studio, I need a quick hands up. ML Studio. We have, we have some, right. ML Studio is a pretty awesome tool. Uh, no need to code, zero coding, you can build a model and make it available as a REST API. Uh, you just give the REST API for your developer and he'll put a JSON in and get a JSON out. 
right that is simple as that uh, in ml studio i'll show you how to do develop an application and it goes as this you get the data drag and drop and you get the algorithms drag and drop and you have some strings attached uh, and then after that you get the output as json that's it posted on azure 24 7 uh, 99 percent 9 uptime uh, that will give you the output uh, that's a simple flow you can use this thing in your any application you name it c sharp java python any application you can use as the front end i'm at this thing azure ml workbench ml workbench is a new tool that is still in the preview but a pretty good tool but working sometimes but when it comes to updates that updates and no uh, you can never find out what updated and uh, what went wrong in that still on that condition but it's going good so in this tool you can do all the code is anyone familiar with doing ml in like the beautiful way that means in the coding way anyone done with python scikit-learn or mxnet no one right uh, you can do all those stuff in this uh, ml workbench uh, the most fascinating fact with ml uh, workbench is get your papers and write down there's something called crisp da c r i s p slash d m cross industry industrial standard for data mining yeah c r i s p slash d m uh, so azure ml workbench allows you to do all those stuff uh, starting from the business understanding and evaluating model and deployment in the real world application that can be done using ML workbench. Right? From the coding <laughs> or drag and drop, not drag and drop, from coding that can be done in ML workbench. Uh, in Microsoft, this is called uh, with a different name uh, TDSP, Team Data Science Process. So, this is the image you can see that thing I know. So, but you can search TDSP and see this image. This is the flow that you have to go if you're building an ML application or AI application or a data science application. Right. Um, right. Any any questions so far? Any questions? I can hear you. Any questions? Right on. Uh, we'll move with uh, this one. GLVM or the Deep Learning Virtual Machine. Have you anyone heard of DSVM, Data Science Virtual Machine? Put a hands up. DSVM. Right. Anyone use uh, Azure VMs? Right. Please hands up. Uh, I, I want to exact uh, count. D, uh, not, not DSVMs, but Azure VMs. Right. Uh, for what, what kind of stuff that uh, you have used uh, Azure VMs? Sorry? Development. Development. Like uh, to build the applications or to do the development. Right. What else? What else? First thing, AD. AD as the AD, right? In a feature called DSV, right? Linux goes with main frameworks, and the tools that you can use for deep learning and machine learning is pre installed and configured in those VMs. You just have to click, 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 and the uh, VM is done. You just, uh, you just SSH, that's it, right? Uh, the most fascinating fact is, have anyone configured your machine with TensorFlow or Tens, uh, Keras or Tiano? Have anyone configured your machine? Have anyone tried? Right. How much of time uh, that uh, cost you? Sorry? Around a, Around a day. So I formatted my uh, machine for like four times when I configured in TensorFlow and those, those things. But if you have a VM, that's just a delete, right? So, no worries in uh, like configuring those things, uh, no hassle. The most fascinating fact, uh, fact with uh, deep learning virtual machine is that is coming with a GPU. Anyone heard of GPUs? Please hands up. GPUs? Anyone use GPUs in your early ages in the college to use uh, do gaming? And anyone goes for your mama and said, oh, I, want a, I, I want a graphic card to play IGI or I don't know. Uh, code 4 or something. Anyone went for your mama or the papa and say, I, I, I want a graphic card, right? Right. Now the graphic card we use for gaming, we are going to use these things to do these calculations. Why? Why are we going to do uh, use these things for calculation? Uh, 
So can you please get this board to here? This one, this one. Yeah, right. Uh, why are you going to use this uh, GPU? You know the GPUs, right? Anyone who doesn't know what GPU is? Anyone? GPU is the graphical processing unit, the graphic card. Right? Uh, right. I'll ask you a question. In a CPU, how many cores, physical cores? In a normal CPU, how many uh, physical cores that we have? Four, right? Like four, I don't know whether it's five, right? Five or something? No, right? Quad core is four, right? Right. We have like four cores. Uh, have anyone experienced while listening to a song, doing a code on Visual Studio and uh, browsing the web on Facebook? Have anyone done that thing? I guess everyone has done that thing, right? So, uh, do you think this computer can do multitask at a time? Do you believe, right? Computers can do multitasking, right? But the hidden bitter truth is computers cannot do multitasking. These CPUs, what they does is it get a thread and execute some time and get another one, execute and put out. These thread and single thread at a time in a physical CPU. So you say like there's only four CPUs in your machine, right? In a machine or in your laptop. But when it comes to a graphic card, that means a GPU you get a lot of cores, we'll say computation cores. Uh, as mentioned in this slide, in 1000 CPU servers, you get 16,000 cores, but it costs this much, this must mean this much. But in one Titan Z, accelerator server with Titan Z, it is having this much of cores, with this amount of dollars and see the power difference that we have too. This is costing like 600 kilowatts while this is costing like 2 kilowatts. That is the power that we have. It. So this GPU I'm talking about the Tesla K80 from NVIDIA it is having uh, as I remember, 4,992 cores at a time compared to the CPU that is only having four cores. So, why this is important? Right. Uh, for that, I'm going to do a uh, small maths. Right. We have this thing here. Uh, everyone has done matrix, right? Matrix? Matrix multiplication? I'm very bad at drawing, but uh, we'll say we have numbers like this. So the rounds are numbers. We have a 9 by 9 matrix. How are we going to multiply these matrices? How are we going to multiply? You know the max from this to this and this and this. And we have to add up. Right? If you're going for a CPU, we have to do each of these steps one by one. Or like in a time of four. So you say four. But these things are embracingly parallel. If you do this computation and this computation and wait for a while, do the uh, sum up at the last, those things can be do parallel, no matter of the accuracy. That is fully accurate. These things can be done parallel. So that that comes with the power of the GPU and you can do these kind of computations, matrix computations in no time using that much of computation cores. That's why GPUs are more powerful. Right? Understand? Right. So you can see how much of time that uh, GPU is going to save us. That is like a boost that we are getting with Azure. Uh, in Azure, GPUs, uh, the computers with the GPUs, you can purchase those things. Uh, these things uh, would cost a little, uh, but you can just switch off and switch on when needed, right? Uh, this is the cost, and this is not available uh, in SEA, I, as I remember. If you have to check whether that is available in Central US, right? Uh, in the DLVM, as I mentioned earlier, that comes with the GPU, a Tesla K80 GPU. 
uh, I would say uh, Tesla K80 is uh, costing like 1 mil here, 1 million rupees. Uh, here in Sri Lanka, you can buy that thing. Many, uh, many, many, many companies have bought those, those things and doing the comparison on those. So, uh, in in the DLVM or the deep learning virtual machine we get on Azure, we have all those fancy tools installed and pre-configured. TensorFlow from Google, CNTK from Microsoft, MXNet, a deep learning framework, uh, NVIDIA digits that's going with the metrics calculations, PyTorch, and Chena is also for DL, Cafe for DL, Keras, a very fancy one. You can use this thing uh, for deep learning. And H2O AI, they have something called sparkling water, deep water, and Tiano, <coughs> Torch, and PyTorch, they have something called PyTorch too. And XG Boost for gradient descent. These things, not, not only these, there are many like this, are pre configured in the DLVM. You just need to click, 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 and you have that. Right. Uh, you name it, all the languages, Python R. And the ID is anyone using PyCharm? Right. Uh, VS Code coming with Linux too. Yeah. Do you have a question? Ah, you are using VS Code. Great. Ah, okay. Uh, then we have Anaconda, the most famous uh, ML framework that we have. Uh, and PySpark, Jupyter, uh, VW, Opal Rabbit that is acquired from Yahoo, and Veka uh, from University of Waikato. Those things are pre configured in both machines or Linux or you name it on Windows, DLVMs, you can get this. But my advice is go with the Linux and that is super awesome. And uh, let's start the playtime or the demos. Any questions so far? Any questions? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, for the demos, I'm going to show you uh, a very famous one. Uh, get your papers and write. MNIST dataset. Uh, this is one of the most famous ones that uh, allows you to cal uh, see whether this is uh, one or two or three or four. A number recognition. Right. Uh, this is for handwritten numbers. What uh, I'm going to do is I have provisioned uh, a deep, deep learning VM on my Azure, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, the power that is having and doing doing some calculations. That is the first part part of the demo. And the second part is uh, doing some cool, that that calculation we did here with these black and white letters. Uh, these black and white letters. We're going to use this thing on Azure ML. No coding, zero coding, you are having the model. That's it. Boom. And then the next part is a uh, big series because you need to put this thing to a production environment. Have you anyone uh, configured a server with Python with ML? So that is pretty hectic. Uh, the system admin guys will blame you because they have to open many ports and all. And uh, your project manager will say to deliver a child. Uh, with your nine developers in one month, I know that's very hard. But uh, there's a saver that comes for you, Docker. So you can use these models in, in ML Workbench or build the models in ML Workbench and push this thing to a Docker and put in DLVM or the Deep Learning Virtual Machine. That is pretty easy and can use. Uh, we'll see, we'll go for a quick demo. I'm go not going to show you everything because I don't have that much of time. Uh, can you see this thing? Can't you? Can you? Like, right. Uh, right. Here, uh, you have, uh, you know, like in Windows 10, you can get Ubuntu Shell too, right? Have anyone used Ubuntu Shell on Windows? Right on. So, this is the tool I'm going to use uh, as the SSH. So, here, uh, right. Um, what I'm going to do is, I have my virtual machine running here. You can see, uh, my DLVM is provisioned. I'm not going to show how to provision these things. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to connect to this D, uh, deep learning. Why is that right? I'm going to SSH for this. Uh, right, it's asking. It's asking my password for the DLVM, and boom, we have the virtual machine on Azure. Right. Uh, if you go with this machine, we can see 
this is pretty like working with a Linux machine. Anyone use Linux Bash? This is working with a Linux Bash. So I'll show you. Uh, I have put some code on this. Uh, I have a Python file. Sorry. Uh, Right. So I have a Python uh, file called Tensor Demo. Uh, I have used TensorFlow to do that MNIST calculation. So uh, I'll go with this. If you win the thing, right? You can see the. Um, can you see the code? So the code is here. Right. Then what I'm going to do is. Right. Uh, we have the machine here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this file on my virtual machine. Right. This is not running in my machine right now. It's running on my virtual machine. Uh, we'll keep some time that to run. And anyone familiar with this IDE? Jupiter? So not Jupiter. Sorry. Uh, Spider. Anyone familiar with Spider? Right. This is coming with Anaconda, the basic ID that comes with Anaconda. I'm not using uh, uh, VS Code, but uh, it's it showed some errors for me. But in this, uh, this code is running on my machine. The same code that I have put on my VM, and I'm running this one on <coughs> my machine. Uh, okay, my machine is also having a GPU. Uh, it's having an NVIDIA 940 MX. So that's running here on my machine. And the next one is running here. And it, ran, uh, it, it is almost done. Can you see? It has got uh, it has got like 32 seconds to execute the code to the MNIST calculation. This MNIST is having 50,000 uh, samples to train. Right, uh, the accuracy is 0.99. Uh, so this one is still running. We'll see how much time, uh, time that my machine is taking to run on my local, and uh, I'm giving my the pain for that machine. Right, that's it. And then uh, this would be like showing magics on AGT or BGT, but pardon me, the time is limited. Uh, right. So that's going on in ML Studio. As I said, uh, that's going to not going to cost you like coding like this. It's not going to allow allow more. It's not going to pain you like that. I'm having a project build on on the demos here. All the things are built just on drag and drop. If you want a data set or algorithm, we'll say classification. You just search classification. You have all those things just drag and drop like that. Right? That is the fancy part with ML Studio that you get. Right. I'm not going to save that thing and we'll say, right, it is 32. And here, is it done? Not all uh, right. Uh, no, no, no. It, it's still all uh, right. It's finished. It has took uh, 128 seconds. Something like pretty good. Not pretty good, but compare comparatively good. Like it's like more like four times better than the local machine. Right. Uh, and when you're building these machines and machine learning models, the people will ask, why not 100 percent? Make sure if it is 100 percent. Uh, that might be a O of it, right? If it is eighty percent or something, that's pretty cool, right? On. Any questions or answer? Uh, any questions that you have? Not not answers. I'm going to answer. Any questions that you have? Any question? While the questions and answers are going, I'm going to show you the awesome uh, sponsors that we have. Uh, other than these guys, the the event is not possible. Mm -hmm. Any questions? 
and equations so you can uh, you guys can read my event using this uh, this is the qr code you have on red event you can see this thing right? oh you can find it find out there on on the billboard 